Welcome, my name is Sarah Faith and you are watching Be It To Have Family Ministry and Times News Watch brought to you every three weeks highlighting events concerning the end times. Hello, um, we have some breaking news. The Russian military has fired upon Ukraine forces and has taken three gunboats. The Ukraine government has call for a war cabinet this may lead to further escalation in this great day of the lord it comes on the heel of a chemical attack in syria in which if i will remind everyone america says that if the syrian government use chemical attacks they will launch military campaign in Syria to diminish the Syrian army, which Russia warned America that if they do that, it's like attacking Russia itself. I don't know if this attack upon Ukraine is to let the America know that they are serious when they say if they attack the Syrian government, it will be as they attack Russia. We're waiting for further development in this great day of the Lord. I advise everyone to make sure they are walking in holiness and righteousness as we at BSF Ministries been preaching. For we are going into turmoil war. We don't know if this is the event that will trigger it, but hold tight. The word of the Lord shall come to pass. So please prepare your mind, your body, and your soul before God. For behold, our Lord and Savior is coming. We will be keeping you update of all the event unfolding events. Now I'll hand you back onto Sarah Faith to continue the news. This is BX Ministries News. Bye bye. News Weekly by Tom O'Connor. US and Russia military came close to fighting each other in Syria, Assad says. Syrian President Bashar al Assad said the US and Russia have nearly come to blows over their separate military campaigns in his country where Moscow supports the government and Washington works outside of it. The US has struck Syrian government targets in defiance of Russian warnings and called Russian volunteer fighters and killed, sorry, Russian volunteer fighters. But the seven year conflict has yet to see any direct confrontations between the US and Russia. In an exclusive interview aired Thursday by Russia's state-owned RT news channel, Assad credited Russia with defusing what could have been a clash between the world's leading military powers as the Islamic State militant group ISIS was defeated and both local and international rivalries deepened. In reality, we were close to have direct conflict between the Russian forces and the American forces and fortunately, it has been avoided, not by the wisdom of the American leadership, but by the wisdom of the Russian leadership, because it is not in the interest of anyone, anyone in this world, and first of all, the Syrians, to have this conflict, Assad told RT. We need the Russian support, but we need at the same time to avoid the American foolishness in order to be able to stabilize our country, he added. The US was an early supporter of efforts to overthrow Assad as he faced a 2011 uprising, also backed by Sunni Muslim monarchies and Turkey. As the Syrian opposition became increasingly jihadi in nature and ISIS emerged from a post-US invasion insurgency in Iraq, the US formed a coalition to battle the militants as they spread across the two Arab countries in 2014. Iran an ally of both the Iraqi and Syrian governments, helped fight the jihadis by mobilizing Shiite Muslim militias and, in 2015, Russia entered the fight in support of Assad. 
Russian and Iranian support has helped the Syrian leader reclaim most major cities and provinces seized by rebels and jihadis, save for the territories now in the hands of the US back Syrian Democratic Forces, a mostly Kurdish alliance that includes Arabs and ethnic minorities as well. Both fractions have succeeded in nearly wiping out ISIS altogether. And Kurdish fighters have worked both alongside and against pro-Syrian government forces at times. But Assad warned Thursday he would not hesitate to use force to retake what they control if they refuse to negotiate. And this was said in this great day of the Lord. Moving on. The Herats reported Syrian officials more than 100 wounded in chemical attack. Rebel commanders and opposition figures discredited the government reports, accusing Damascus of seeking to undermine an existing ceasefire. Russia says the attack was launched from rebel-controlled region shelling by insurgents wounded more than 100 people in a suspected toxic gas attack in Syria's Aleppo, which a health official described as the first such assault in the city. The shells caused dozens of people breathing problems on Saturday night in Aleppo, while government shelling killed nine people in a village in Idlib, a monitoring group said. State news agency Sana said on Sunday that 107 people were injured in Aleppo after militants hit three districts with projectiles containing gases that caused choking. It marks the highest such casualty toll in Aleppo since government forces and their allies clawed back the city from rebels nearly two years ago. Rebel commanders and opposition figures discredited the government reports, denying they lobbed gas into Aleppo and accusing Damascus of seeking to undermine an existing ceasefire and efforts to kickstart political talks. Russia's Ministry of Defence said in a statement the chemical attack had been launched from an area in the Idlib de-escalation zone controlled by Nazra Front militants and that it planned to talk to Turkey about the incident since Ankara was a guarantor of how the armed opposition there upheld a ceasefire. According to our preliminary information, confirmed in particular by symptoms of poisoning among the victims, the shells used to bombard residential areas of Aleppo were filled with chlorine gas, Russian Major General Igar Konasenkov said in the statement. Earlier Saturday, government shelling of a rebel-held area in neighbouring Idlib province killed at least seven civilians. In Aleppo city, local governor Hassan Diab visited the injured at the hospital. He told State TV that 41 people had been admitted and accused rebels of using poisonous gas in the missiles they lobbed at the Aleppo neighbourhood. Health official Hajj Tahar later said the number of injured was up to 50, adding that symptoms suggest the gas use was indeed chlorine. Further tests are needed, he said. The projectiles landed in the Al Khalidiyah neighbourhood and wind caused gas to spread, Aleppo Police Chief Assam Al Sali told State TV. State TV later said the gas affected two other areas in the city. There are no deaths, Al Sali said. One patient said a foul, a foul smell filled the air after projectiles were logged. There are often missiles on the city, but this is the first time we smelled such a smell the patient said without giving his name. State TV later said government troops retaliated, hitting the source of the attack. It didn't elaborate. A ceasefire in Aleppo and Idlib has been fraying in recent days. Aleppo has come under rebel attack in recent weeks, with missiles falling inside the city. The government has responded with counter-attacks on rebel-held areas in the Aleppo countryside. Earlier Saturday, Rescue Works and the Britain-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said government shells landed in Jazanaz, a rebel-held town in Idlib province, hitting students as they were leaving their school. The shelling killed eight, including six children, according to the civil defence team in the opposition-held area. The opposition fighters don't have chemical weapons or the means to lab them, rebel commander Abdel Salam Ab Del Rezek said. On Twitter, he accused the government of staging the attack to frame the rebels. Rebel spokesman Masufa 
Sajabi said the government is seeking to undermine the ceasefire deal. In the absence of independent monitors, it is difficult to corroborate gas attacks, but both sides of the conflict have accused each other throughout the war of using poisonous gas. A joint team from the United Nations and the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons accused Syria's government of using chlorine gas in the least two attacks in 2014 and 2015 and the nerve agent Serin in an attack in April 2017 in the town of Khan Shikon that killed about 100 people. The US launched a series of strikes on Syrian government sites in retaliation for the attack in Khan Shikon. The UN OPCW team also accused the Islamic State extremist group of using mustard gas twice in 2015 and 2016. The government accused rebels of using gas in a 2013 attack on Khan al Assal, a village southwest of Aleppo city that killed 25 people. And this happened in the great day of the Lord. Thank you very much for watching. Please keep walking in righteousness and holiness, staying on that straight and narrow path that leads to everlasting life in this day of the Lord. And pray always without season so that you might escape the things that will take place in the world. Please subscribe and hit the bell notification button to be notified every time we upload a new video. And please do leave comments and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or if you found it, well, I know I say enjoyed, it's not really, it's quite sad news, but if it helped you in any way, um, if it enlightened you and if it helped you to understand the day that we are in. Apologies, I have another video that I do and so I always say enjoy at the end so it kind of just comes out automatically. But please do share this video, um, not everybody is aware of the end times that we are in and by you sharing this video it may very well be the wake up call that they need in order to repent for time is short and we have less time than the majority of people think that we have. Please do join us if you're a woman for the woman's Bible for the woman's prayer call which takes place every Friday from half seven to half eight. And if you are a man, we have a men's prayer call which takes place every Saturday starting at 8 p.m. Also for both men and women, we have a Bible study group which takes place at 7.30 p.m. All is UK time conducted by the King's Conference app and you will need to download the King's Chat app in order to be able to participate via the King's Conference app and we would absolutely love to have you join us. Contact us via email as well. Uh, the email address is manofissachar40 at googlemail.com or visit our website www.beitsahabministry.org.uk We have another website which will be up and running soon which is www.beitsahab.co.uk even if there's any particular sermons that you would like, anything that you are lacking in understanding and need help, then you can send it to the email address or give us a call on 0207 101 3934 or WhatsApp on 07426-301-391. Thank you. And also, we would like to let you know that every three weeks, we will be meeting in person. Hallelujah! Praise God! We are finally meeting every three weeks. We used to meet once or twice a year, mainly when it was an anniversary or a baptism, but now we are meeting every three weeks. The last one was yesterday, and so it will be three weeks from yesterday, and then three weeks after that and every three weeks and by the grace of God one day we will be meeting every week so we would love to have you come and join us even if you're visiting the UK on holiday please we would love to have you come and join us it's at Good Mays Baptist Church which is in Ilford only less than a five minute walk from Good Mays train station on the C2C but we will be announcing it also on the videos on the website
and we will be 15th. meeting on the 15th of December for our next one. Please do look out for the times that we will be meeting. So we thank you so much and we are now going to pray. Hallelujah. Precious, righteous and holy Father, we thank you so much for your goodness. We thank you so much for your mercies. Hallelujah. We thank you so much for never leaving nor forsaking us, Father. Um, we thank you so much for the word, Father. And we thank you for helping us to understand that the times that we are in, Father, even as the tribe of Issachar understood the times that we was in, we thank you for your dear son, man of Issachar, who was enabled to help us understand the times that we are in. And we pray, please, Father, that your will will be done on the earth, Father. Please, that you, we know that everybody who is appointed, Father, is appointed by you, Father. And we pray that your plans and purposes will come to pass, Father. For we know that all things are working together for our good as long as we love you and are called according to your purpose. And we do ask, please, Father, we pray for the peace of Israel. Please, that you will increase the peace in Israel, that you would rise up against the enemies of Israel and they will scatter. We ask that your children will keep your commandments, Father, for the... In Deuteronomy 28, it says that if we are to keep your commandments, that the enemies will come in one way and they will flee before us seven ways, Father. Do we ask, please, that you would help Israel to keep your commandments? Please forgive them even for their sins, Father, and help them to drive out all the abominations, Father, the feasts, Father, that um, are displeasing to you, Father. All of the parades that they have, Father, that are an abomination to you, that they would seize and tear down all the statutes, Father, that are displeasing to you, Father, and go back to your word, Father, and do the things that, make you father smile and that bring you joy and bring you a delight for truly we reap what we sow and as we delight you father then you would um help them father and d do the things that bring delight to them father which having peace in the land brings delight to um, any soul father and we pray father even for the people that we have heard of father we know that you are in control, Father. Even when people think that they are in control, you are in control. And we see your very word manif um, un we see your very word manifesting in front of us. And we ask please that you will tear down the veil, Father, that is over the people's eyes, Father, over your children's eyes and help them to know the truth of who you are and even that your son is coming. And for those in the world who do not know you, please, Father, that you would Break their hearts, Father, of um, stone and give them a heart of flesh. Pour out your Holy Spirit on them, Father. Soften them and help them to know you, Father, that they may have eternal life, Father. So we thank you so much. Help them, help your children, Father, to rend their hearts and not just their garments, Father. And help us, Father, to um, continue walking on the straight and narrow path that leads to everlasting in life father in righteousness and in holiness and for anyone who doesn't know Yeshua as their personal Lord and Savior and would want to make one of the best decisions that they can make which is asking Yeshua to be the Lord and Savior then I ask that you would just repeat this prayer after me if you believe that he is the son of God and he came and he died for your sins and you want to turn away from your sins and and repent and just say dear God I thank you very much for sending your son Yeshua to be the savior of the whole world I ask please that you will forgive me of my sins wash me cleanse me purge me and make me brand new. I renounce all of my sins. I turn away from my past life and I turn to serve you, the one and only true living God. I ask please that you will bless me with your wonderful Holy Spirit and that you will lead me on the straight and narrow path that leads to everlasting life. I declare, Yeshua, that you are my Lord, that you are my Saviour, and that I will follow you all the days of my life. Thank you so much, Father, for forgiving me of my sins. In Yeshua's name, Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Praise God. That is one of the 
the best decisions that you can ever make and I say, always say the best decision you can ever make is to actually follow Yeshua and to do as he says being a child of God being led by the Holy Spirit becoming the sons and daughters of God so I love you God bless you I hope to see you in person until next time take care bye bye